Inspire Ed Virtual Learning Series. Welcome to Inspire Ed. As we continue to watch the COVID-19 pandemic evolve in Ohio, this school year looks different for everyone. And that is why Inspire Ed was created by the Ohio Department of Education's Office for Exceptional Children and Ocali. Because you are here with us today, we know that you are interested in expanding your knowledge and capacity through online learning. So we also want you to know about OcaliCon Line, the nation's premier autism and disabilities conference. While we usually bring thousands of people together in Columbus, Ohio each year, this year, we're doing it all virtually. Registration is open now. We invite you to join us November 11th through 13th. Head over to ocali.org to learn more. Welcome and thanks for joining us. We are excited to connect with you as part of the Inspire Ed virtual learning series. This series is dedicated to providing timely information and resources to professionals and families supporting students, including those with disabilities, in a virtual learning environment. The content of this webinar has been pre-recorded, but we want to encourage your participation. If you have any questions or comments, we invite you to be part of the discussion by using the chat feature. Questions will be answered throughout the webinar, and later, we'll be providing a link in the chat to a brief survey. By completing the survey, you'll be able to access a certificate verifying your attendance in this webinar. Welcome to Inspire Ed. Today, we are going to talk about the top 10 tips to develop a growth mindset in a virtual world. Our presenters today Starting with me, Jacqueline DeCibio. I'm a consultant for the State Support Team Region 5. Hello, everyone. My name is Julie Wyant, and I'm an educational consultant with State Support Team 9. Hello, my name is Colleen Cornish, and I am also a consultant with State Support Team 9. Hi, I'm Ron Rogers from the UDL Center at Ocali. I'm the director. We are all members of the Ohio UDL Collaborative, which is a group of consultants and educational leaders in Ohio who believe in the ability of the UDL framework to engage and empower learners. We work to build the capacity of educators in Ohio to implement the UDL framework in their classrooms. Our objectives for this session are to help participants transfer from a traditional learning environment into a remote learning environment with a growth mindset. Has it been challenging? Sure. But when you have a growth mindset, you know you can accomplish anything. We want to ensure that all students, including those with disabilities, develop a growth mindset and an accessible and successful learning experience in a remote setting. We hope that you all learn practical strategies to develop a growth mindset for immediate application in school or home. Try it. You'll like it. Grit, perseverance, and resilience are essential during these crazy times. We transitioned from a traditional classroom to virtual learning last spring, and some of us are still teaching, learning, and working in a virtual setting. We have all demonstrated grit, perseverance, and resiliency over the past few months. Whether you're watching this from home, your classroom, or listening in your car, our goal for this session today is to give you our top 10 tips for developing a growth mindset for a virtual world and maybe make you smile a bit too. And to keep you active as we're going through our presentation, we would love to have you tweet using hashtag OHUDL. And you know what? Just tweet away. But always remember hashtag OHUDL so we can find all those tweets later. All right, now, now's a chance for some, we're gonna interact with you. So here we go. Please hear everything and, and listen real close first. And you can join in with your thoughts in the chat box. Since we're all members of the Ohio UDL Collaborative, we're all about engagement during learning. We want you to think about each statement as each one is read and then try to place yourself someplace on the scale for each question. We'll start with the first one and then pause after each one 
so you can place yourself mentally on the scale. Here we go. I'm going to describe this slide in case anyone's driving and just kind of wants to listen. There's little happy faces and sad faces on the left of each one of these four questions. The first question says, do you have a certain amount of basic intelligence and you can't really do much to change it? Now, you can either strongly agree, agree, mostly agree, mostly disagree, disagree or strongly disagree. Please put that in the chat box if this is one of them that you wanna answer. Now there's four questions, so you can kind of feel free to do whichever one. Hey Ron, can they tweet too? Number, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I like that idea. They could tweet also. Number two, people's cognitive abilities are fluid and readily manageable. Again, strongly agree, agree, mostly agree, mostly disagree, disagree or strongly disagree, and you can tweet that, hashtag OHUDL, or you can put it in the chat box. Number three, question three. You can learn new things, but you can't really change the basic level of intelligence. Again, strongly agree, agree, mostly agree, mostly disagree, disagree or strongly disagree. Question number four. You can change even your basic level of intelligence considerably. And remember, we have those five areas. Strongly agree, agree, mostly agree, mostly disagree, disagree or strongly disagree. Hey, Ron, um, while they're thinking about this and placing it in the chat box, I'm wondering if we could model for them. Um, like, for instance, I would say that I strongly disagree with number one. Um, I think that intelligence is malleable. It can be increased or decreased over time. It's not static. So honestly, I think that I personally learn something new every single day, especially in this remote learning environment. Yeah, and I would model as I agree with number two. As we go through life, we have opportunities to make connections with intelligence. A student may start out without a lot of writing skills when they start in the classroom, but with explicit instruction, interactions, and interest on the child's part, a child can become a great writer. I think about when I was teaching in the classroom during COVID, we allowed all of our students to write about their opinion of, do they think we should stay in school or should we be at home? And it was amazing to see all levels of learners and how much they were able to write. That's awesome. Um, and I'll give my opinion as well. I strongly agree with number four. Our brains are always evolving. And when we put our mind to it, we can do anything. All right. So what is this whole idea of growth mindset? Um, growth mindset, which is the work of Carol Dweck, is based on the simple premise that as humans, we're either much more likely to succeed if we believe that effort and not our inherent skills, intelligence and talent will be a result or will result in success. So in other words, growth mindset is this idea that intelligence and talent can go up and down depending on our effort that we put forth. So the opposite of growth mindset is this idea of a fixed mindset or the belief that some things in life are simply just out of our reach. So let's take a moment to look at the difference between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. So if you have a fixed mindset, then you think that intelligence is pretty static, which leads to this desire to just kind of want to look smart. Um, you tend to avoid challenges. You give up easily due to obstacles. Um, you, you see this effort as fruitless. You can ignore useful feedback. And at times you're really threatened by other people's successes. If you have a growth mindset, on the other hand, then you believe that intelligence can be developed, um, which then leads to this desire to want to learn and therefore a tendency to really embrace challenges, to persist ob obstacles, 
to see effort as a path to mastery and to learn from criticism. And you tend to be more inspired by others' successes. So which one of these do you really want to have? Um, do you want to have a fixed mindset or a growth mindset? Which one do you want your students to have? Which one do you want your children to have at home? You know, it really doesn't matter who you are or what mindset, um, what abilities you have, because developing a growth mindset will just help you in our face-to-face -face setting as well as our virtual remote learning world that we find ourselves in today. Awesome. Thanks, Julie. Well, folks, you are in for a treat. Uh, we are going to do our growth mindset top 10 list. And uh, I'd like to introduce Ocali's very own David Letterman, Ron Rogers. Welcome back to the program, ladies and gentlemen, from the home office of Columbus, Ohio. In honor of Inspire Ed, here's today's top 10. The category is growth mindset. Here we go. Number 10. Replacing the word failing with learning. Thanks, Ron. We need to remember that failing isn't a bad thing. When we fail, it is our first attempt in learning. So teaching our children that making mistakes or not getting it right isn't a bad thing, but that they're just learning is an important aspect of developing a growth mindset. We can't give up in learning, whether it's something for school or something in life, we have to keep going. And when we do, we learn how best to accomplish something. We need to reframe our thinking on failing and you can help your child develop that outlook by encouraging them to learn from mistakes. Remember, you might not always get it right the first time, but don't give up. You are just learning how not to do it. Okay, number nine, view challenges as opportunities. A marathon is a challenge. You start with one step to get to 26.2 miles. This is very comparable to planning an interactive lesson. It's a challenge to engage all learners, but you must have a belief that it can be done. There's an opportunity. The idea of changing the way you're presenting every 10 to 15 minutes is a great tip for engagement. Get kids up and moving. Teach to engage in a, with a certain word. Have a promotion or a break every 20 to 25 minutes after productive work. Another teacher friend of mine, when I asked her about the subject, said to me that growth mindset should be the driving point of all students, especially students on IEPs. Whether remote or not, they have a goal to reach and we need to be more creative than ever to help them achieve that. It is difficult for remote learning, but setting due dates has helped and making remote learning has driven and has been interactive as possible and helps that as well too. Having the kids see your face is very important too. It gives them a sense of consistency and clarity that you have expectations for them. The growth mindset for any student should not change with remote learning versus in-school learning. The teacher just has to be a little bit more creative on how to get them there. Also virtual field trips, that helps change that challenge to an opportunity. Number eight, provide regular opportunities for reflection. Around, I'll take that one. So number eight is all about reflection. And we, when we work with students online, we must remember to have built in time for reflection, time to reflect not only as educators on our own practice, but also providing time for our students to reflect as well. Um, without reflection, it's almost impossible for learning to occur. You know, we don't learn from experience, but we learn from reflecting on our own experience. One way that you can teach students to reflect on their work in either the remote or the face-to-face -face environment is to allow students to notice and correct their own mistakes. So if a student fails or does poorly on an assignment, they should have an opportunity to redo and learn from their mistakes. That really does cultivate a growth mindset in our students. Um, students should also 
you know, reflect on what resources or strategies they've used to really help them when things got difficult. And then as educators, we should take the time to reflect on our own teaching practices. You know, after we teach a lesson face-to-face or remote, what could I have done differently? You know, what improvements can I make? What worked well for my students? What didn't work well for my students? So the bottom line is we all need to just take the opportunity to reflect in order to promote a growth mindset. Now, Julie. When I first started teaching, I remember all other colleagues making me feel guilty for allowing them to redo assignments. There was always that, you know, that back and forth, back and forth. It was always an ongoing thing. You know, should we let them redo the homework or not? And then there was the argument of, well, if we do let them redo it, do they receive full credit? I would totally agree with you. When I first started teaching, I, I always allowed my students to redo assignments, but there was a lot of guilt from my other colleagues. Like, are you really allowing them to redo all their assignments? Are you going to give them full credit for that? And looking back, you know, I think at, I first started, I, I started to give like maybe half the points back. And I realize now that the only way to learn is to grow and learn from our own mistakes. So We shouldn't expect our students to be perfect on their first attempt. That's not even realistic. So allowing students to correct and redo assignments for full credit really is best practice today. And reflecting on our work, including our mistakes, is just another way or a great way for us all to learn and grow, Ron. Number seven, celebrate growth with others. Celebrating the growth is a great way to engage the growth mindset. Remote learning and the focus on technology has allowed the use of data to be more user-friendly and holds teachers accountable to instruct with what works. Use the time that you have with students on Zoom, through FaceTime, effectively. Also, remote meetings have allowed for teacher-based teams and building leadership teams to continue to meet and use the data to inform instruction and target those learners who may need more interventions and take the time to celebrate that growth with your team, which is very important. Teachers are meeting more and more through Zoom, through FaceTime. So even if a teacher may not be able to make it to all the way to a different building, they might still be able to engage with district leadership teams and take part in those district-wide meetings so they can celebrate that growth. We are ready for number six, place effort before talent. Boy, isn't that the truth, Ron? Doesn't it feel so much more rewarding when you accomplish something that took effort versus something that came easily to you? It's like sports. You may be talented and naturally blessed with ability, but the greatest athletes are the ones who put forth the most effort. It's the same thing with learning. It doesn't matter what label you may have. Your success will depend on your effort. We can help our students develop that mantra by praising their efforts and not giving them generic praise. You can say, wow, look at how hard you're working at putting that puzzle together. I bet if you stick with it, you'll get it done rather than, boy, oh boy, you're great at puzzles. Or when your student comes home with a good grade on a test, you could say, I know how hard you studied for that test and all of that time and dedication really paid off versus, wow, look at how smart you are. I'm so proud. Offering that specific praise, um, it really validates your student's effort. And that's one of the keys to developing a growth mindset. Number five, number five, acknowledge and embrace imperfection. So like this is number five. I feel like I should sing it out like five golden rings. But uh, tip number five is my favorite tip. So I'm going to say it again. Acknowledge and embrace imperfection. No one is perfect. Striving for um, perfection is impossible, and it can also be really detrimental to our kids' well-being. The negative impacts of perfectionism are really scary. Um, Teaching our kids that perfectionism is unhealthy is something that we should all, um, as parents, as teachers, be striving to do. And how can we do that? Well, we need to talk to our kids. Uh, We need to create a space for them to be vulnerable and safe. We need to talk with them about our own imperfections. Um, We should be able to go back to tip number 10 and help them that remember to remember that um, 
you know, failing isn't a bad thing. We need to teach our kids that there's joy in failure and joy in imperfection. We need to celebrate our imperfections and mistakes by viewing them as opportunities for growth instead of as negatives. And of course, we all want our kids to do their best, um, but we need them to understand that their best is okay. It's not about being perfect. So um, that's why this tip is so important is because it is critical that we teach our students and ourselves, maybe, (laughs) that we don't have to be perfect. And the image that we have um, is a pie with kind of like an uneven crust. Uh, And so we pick this image because um, just because that crust might be a little like uneven and it may not look perfect, I bet that pie still tastes just as good, right? Looks amazing. I know. I can't wait for Thanksgiving. Let's go bring on the mashed potatoes. Okay, just a reminder, please, everybody, remember to put your comments and your suggestions and your answers in the chat box. Number four, take risks in the company of others. Thank you, Ron. Um, You know, when we're taking risks in this remote learning environment, which either we are or we will be taking these risks, try not to take yourself too seriously. Um, Be willing to make those mistakes in front of others, because if you're growing, then this is bound to happen. And making mistakes in front of others will usually get easier with practice, especially in front of our students. So being vulnerable is challenging for most of us, including myself. Um, Vulnerability is not a sign of weakness, but it can be your greatest strength. It really does show that we are human. Um, So I guess in this space, we should encourage risk making instead of risk taking and remote learning. You come up with the risk and decide if it's worth doing. That's called risk making. Do what you're passionate about. And always remember that you can't trip on stage if you're always in the audience. So um, to wrap this up, switching to remote learning abruptly like we did last spring was so challenging for all of us, educators, students, and parents alike. We all had to really take those risks or make those risks and fail forward, Ron. Julie, be careful when you're wakeboarding. I know you like to take risks, but that's a scary picture. Yeah, you know, um, that's not quite on my bucket list. I'm not sure if that's a risk I'm willing to take at my age, but you never know. Maybe not yet. Here we go. Number three. Stop seeking approval from others. Whoa, this is a big one. We need to stop worrying what others think about us, and we need to teach our kids to do the same. This reminds me of the goal of UDL to create expert learners. It also reminds me of what my therapist says, but that's for another day. In UDL, we cultivate expert learners, students who are motivated and purposeful, resourceful and knowledgeable, strategic and goal-directed. We empower our learners to own their learning. Having a drive to motivate yourself is a key characteristic of being an expert learner. And when you're an expert learner, it's about mastering your goals, not the goals that others have for you, but the goals that you've set for yourself. So as parents and educators, we can empower our kiddos to own their learning because when they own it, they're more motivated to succeed for themselves. Here we go. Number two, value the process over the end result. Wow. You know, Ron, this tip is just so powerful in life itself. So we're all on this remote learning journey together right now, right? And we're in some unknown territory. We're not sure how long this pandemic will last. But when you commit to the process, you never give up. You creatively overcome setbacks and obstacles. You're willing to try new strategies. A very powerful metamorphosis happens and you literally transform in that process. So I'm just hopeful that as educators that we're going to use this opportunity to transform our practices into better futures for our students. Take the good that we're getting or learning from our remote learning experience and apply that to lessons um, moving forward in education. So this particular photo, Ron, was chosen to really capture the importance of the journey. 
the road will not always be smooth. Um, in fact, throughout our travels, we're going to encounter many, many challenges. But it's the doing. It's those small steps, those incremental goals that we set and achieve along the way that's often a lot more important than the outcome or winning of any sort of race. So to conclude tip number two, really trust that the trust in the process and embrace the remote learning journey that we're all on together. For category, for category, growth mindset, the number one, the number one, yes, we're at number one. Embrace the power of yet. Look at those cute kids learning how to tie their shoes. That Right now, that's where I'm at at home. My kids are learning how to tie their shoes. And it's a process. They just don't know how to do it yet. But they will. That relates to remote learning. A lot of kids at the beginning, they couldn't figure out how to log in. They couldn't figure out how to get into Zoom. But the idea of you're just not there yet. You're going to learn. Kids struggle with their multiplication facts, whether they're remote or not. The nines, they're so hard. But you have to remind students and remind kids that they, they may not be there yet, but with the right tips and tricks and practice, there is always a way. Even if they can't memorize them, remember the finger trick with the nines, you'll get there. So live life know, knowing that you are always striving for growth. If you're not growing, you're not living. If kids know that mistakes are okay, they will overcome challenges and get closer to their goals. Our examples of how we handle challenges, that's essential for teaching students a growth mindset. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the program. In honor of Inspire Ed, we are going to recap real quickly today's top 10. The category is growth mindset. Here we go. Number 10, replacing the word failing with learning. Okay, number nine, view challenges as opportunities. Number eight, provide regular opportunities for reflection. Number seven, celebrate growth with others. Number six, place effort before talent. Number five, acknowledge and embrace imperfection. Number four, take risks in the company of others. Number three, stop seeking approval from others. Number two, value the process over the end result. Drum roll, please. The number one from the top 10 list is embrace the power of yes. There you have it, folks. The top 10. Awesome. And Ron, we want them to put their favorite in the chat box, right? Yes, absolutely, Colleen. Thank you. Yeah. So I guess maybe we should model that for them as well, don't you think, Ron? All right. Yeah, that would be good. We, we, should, we should model that. So I would say my favorite tip is number two, to value the process over the end result. And I think it's my favorite because this tip can be applied to all aspects of our lives, including the remote learning journey that we're all on together right now. And my favorite is number one, embrace the power of yet. I'm going to tweet that right now. And mine is number five. Acknowledge and embrace imperfection. Your imperfect imperfections make you uniquely, perfectly you. Ron, what's your favorite? Oh, man. I'll tell you what. I love the number 10, which is, of course, number 10. But it's replace the word failing with learning. I just love that. Yeah, awesome. I'm excited to read what everyone else is um, favorites are too in the chat box. Yes. Or on Twitter, O-H-U-D-L with the hashtag at the beginning. Don't forget to tweet. So in the chat box now, we're placing the evaluation link. Um, we would really love to hear your feedback so we can grow and improve. I mean, we are the growth mindset team, right guys? <laughs> right. Um, 
you can click on the link uh, in the chat box um, to get a handout with our top 10 tips. Julie created an infographic for you, so that way you could print it out and remember what we said about developing a growth mindset. We hope that you find our tips um, for developing a growth mindset in a virtual world as practical strategies, so you can immediately put them into place to help you navigate school or home with a different outlook. Because... When you approach life with a growth mindset, you understand abilities can be developed. All of our students need to know that they can develop skills and us adults can benefit from having a growth mindset too. As parents and educators, developing a growth mindset for our kids is essential. It's something we all need to be focused on. Everyone benefits from having a growth mindset. All students, no matter their label, should be encouraged to have a growth mindset. And remember to review these tips often with your child. Talk to your child about what having a growth mindset means and model a growth mindset and reinforce when you see your child um, displaying that as well. We're all parents on this panel, so we're going to end with a quote from Dr. Carol Dweck. If parents want to give their children a gift, the best thing they can do is teach their children to love challenges, be intrigued by mistakes, enjoy effort, and keep on learning. That way, their children don't have to be slaves to praise. They will have a lifelong way to build and repair their own confidence. We know times are stressful now, but we do have the power to shift our thinking and make these times things that we can learn and grow from. We've got this. So thank you so much. We know and understand that your time is precious and important. And we wanted to say thank you so much for placing your time with us these last 30 minutes. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for spending Thanks. time with us. Um, remember, if you're feeling frustrated in this remote learning journey, use that power of yet. We may not be there yet, but together with the growth mindset, we will get there because our kids deserve it. Sure do. Amen. <laughs> well, thank you so much, guys. Thanks. Thanks. We've provided a link in the chat to a brief survey and we'll also follow up by email with the same link and additional information about the series. This series is for you and we welcome any feedback. By completing the survey, you'll be able to access a certificate verifying your attendance in this webinar. This recording and related resources will be available on demand through our website, ocali.org. There, you'll also find upcoming and past episodes of Inspire Ed, and you can keep the conversation going on social media. Find us at Ocali Official on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and by using the hashtag InspireEdOhio. As we move forward together in virtual learning, our connections help to inspire success. InspireEd, virtual learning series.